about it. I was trying to pull up some pictures or a brief mm-hmm. image of some stuff that came out from uh, not too long ago, I think three or 400 years. Like I'm not fast, how, I'm not sure how fast a reality can be reset, but here's mm-hmm. one picture here. And it just shows that, that this electromagnetism was being used uh, as a way. And I have several of these images and they all appear to be very authentic. And I'm gonna put that up here now. And, uh, and I'll blow that up and make sure that everybody can see that on my side. Let's see here. Let me push this over. There we go. And then let me move this out of the way. So there's several of these images and, yeah, and, and, and they're yeah. way more detailed. Like this is actually the least detailed image. And it basically just shows the construction. Actually, here's another one. And even the guy's got his hand in the coat, like the hidden hand. And and, and where this is all starting to come from is, is this mm. Tartarian knowledge, which is basically the idea that there was an entire civilization out in the area that's now what we call Russia, called Tartaria. And they had actually reached a rather high state of advancement in using, especially yeah. electronics, and that actually there was no oil and combustion that they were actually have, using these electrical energies. Have you, back to the uh, other one, um, the, the it just um, move the move the other oh. one back. Uh, I want to have okay. a look at that. That's the one. Have you no, no, not not that one there. Yeah. Have you noticed the signifier there? Yes, the hand in the coat. The hidden yes. hand. <laughs> the now, hidden hand. Now the hidden hand in this respect is a guy um, is um, um, Yad Yad Al Jazza, which is um, the hand of the giant which is um, in Orion. Mm. So it's the star constellation Orion. So this is the knowledge of um, the gibberim or the giants. Now, Sir Isaac Newton himself alluded to this knowledge. He said, I have stood on the shoulders of giants. Now, at one mm. level, it's referring to Eton because the Anglo-Saxon noun Eton means a giant, but the um, Eton is another word for the Nephilim. So it's this knowledge which goes back to Nephilia, which is Orion. And as we said before, when you begin to break down the holographic construct, then not only can you time travel, but you can then go into the imaginal realm, this uh, which Plato talks about. And this is what you're actually seeing here. And can you see, you see the hand as well. Again, the um, hand on the left picture again is another symbol of the hidden hand. So this is knowledge of electromagnetism, which is connected to the spiritual world. And so I, I think that's very yes. fun. I've never seen those photographs before. And I think that's absolutely yes. Brilliant. Yes. I'll definitely I'll send them over to you so that way you can you know do your own thorough examination because I feel like also in many of these images you actually see other symbolism that is very yeah, telltale. Yeah. And you've got the skull as well, haven't you? So he's yeah, it's almost like a, a reanimation process. Reanimation, yeah. Yeah. And again, he's got his hand. Hidden in his coat and he's got a little wand down there and you know cgi i wand. mean photoshop only gets you so far so this ain't <laughs> photoshop <laughs> we be in photoshop no, all day I, and... I, I think that these are genuine photographs they look like yes he's, he's got his um, hat as well which is again part of this um, secret society network if you mm. if you look at the jar as well because um, the jar within um, symbolism oh yeah the pot right uh, with the gin in there maybe yeah. Pandora's box, which was a type of urn, which was for burying the dead. So she, when she opens the urn, she releases the spirits. And so again, this is a cytological symbol of the um, Ophanim wheels, because the, the Ophanim wheels, the Ruach Elohim, are the high spirits, but they are physical or particular. And again, let's have a look at this. Yes, and it, and everything is based upon this idea of magnetism, isn't it? You've got right, the, Every, and that's right. And, and, and as being a person who also works with you know electronics and things like as, from an engineering level, yeah. everything down here looks pretty much like what would be needed to accomplish this. So it's not like you just see again photoshopped in certain pieces yeah. that it's like that's not functional. This is would yeah. be functional transistor tubes electricity and then a reanimation as if like you were saying before that if there's another if there's all these realms are existing simultaneously mm-hmm. this is a way to actually tap into a person and bring them like a tv like a like a, what we right. would want yeah. tv to be now like let me talk to grandma yeah. 50 uh, years I mean, ago the, or somebody that's dead <laughs> i mean on the fringe um they talked about this didn't they in terms of seeing different realities on the screen but if you look at the photograph here on the screen we're seeing these coils and these coils are um, representative of the aeon the aeon is the age so within yes. gnostic idea the emanation of um, um 
universal forms or the implicated order into the particular realm, which is physical reality. So again, we're looking here at something which is very symbolic with the curtain as well, which is the veil and the revealing of the spiritual, the crossover between the spiritual or the imaginal realms and the physical realms. And this is why ghosts and, you, and you know, the other thing, Pierre, I, w I, I would like to, you know, just mm -hmm. bring into this and I, we're almost done here, but look, how, look there's the a lot on the wheel as well. Look, so you've got the um, uh, opening wheel and the circle, the circle and the wheel are interchangeable. So this yes. idea of this knowledge, which is connected to the opening, which again, are the Ruach Ellen, the high spirits. Um, you know, so, yes, Pierre, I have one of these books from, um, ancient Aleppo like the, I guess it's the mystic order of the shrines it's one of their books and and the only thing that I wanted to notate out of this book is just how many men are actually in this book is it yeah. way more people in secret societies than the common concept because it seems like this book is almost 80 years old and it's full <laughs> of men they own the railroad companies they own the power companies and it just goes yeah. on and on and on and on how many people are in this societies would you say i don't know i i don't know because i'm not a part of the cir circle of knowledge right. <laughs> and um, i'm not I, I i wouldn't ever compromise myself in 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 that way so yes. i really don't yes. know but from what we can ascertain it's pervasive it's everywhere and we see right. that with corporate logos we see that within the media um it, it's absolutely everywhere so if you want to be anyone or anybody um you have to be a part of, of these organizations often um Mostly, right. You know, that, 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 that was the, their old paradigm, right? They've been holding a monopoly on this technology. Yeah. And it even seems like, again, like it, this is, these are oh. old pictures, like these are Quakers <laughs> in a certain tense. So yeah, it's well, not necessarily an advanced technology. It's a certain well, stage of awareness, right? Well, Facebook, the, the Hebrew word panim, which is face, is where you get the etymology of pana, which is to turn, and the word ofan, which is a wheel. So when God is talking to Moses, um, it, the term is used face, but the word etymology is related to turn, which is related to a wheel. So the face of God is actually a wheel. wheel wow, that's, that's incredible because even when I came into that awareness of the words, when I wrote the book, The Code of the Matrix, it yeah, basically was explained to me that it was turning wheels in my mind, that my mind had previously a broken wheel mm -hmm. because of the language and not being able to connect it. And then now yeah, with so. this additional insight of how all the words were similar that I was turning a complete wheel and through that I actually answer anything based on more of an algorithm than the actual mm -hmm. awareness of knowledge so it's like a sequence rather than yeah. uh, data compiling and I think yeah, that's also the future of tech uh, future of storage of data is more of mm -hmm. storing it in sequences that can be unpacked rather than large bits and bytes that actually amount to large amounts of data it just is just algorithms yeah. So, wow. Um, I, I yeah, I think that's very interesting. Yeah, and again, I think we'll move away from this kind of like binary system, and probably yes. will produce at least this third element, this um, potentiality where um, yes, it's neither one nor the other. It's so again, yes, this, Some, somehow a synthesis, right? This quantum quantum computers. Okay, I guess somebody may have took over the screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is is that I will uh, say, you know, this has been amazing for me you know as far as being able to connect in i had the initial sound issues i was a little bit concerned about not even being able to get in and, and ask some questions and and even mediate yep. the conversation from a level of getting uh, just your awareness out on the mm -hmm. table because i feel like you have so much information i mean it's in the volumes of your book uh so yeah. getting you to speak towards specific things mm -hmm. is also necessary and so i look forward to our next build where we can do that. Maybe we go in on right. YouTube live and, and give some love really? out there. I'll also, Let's you know, I'll, I'll talk to you about this, but maybe with your permission, I'd love to get this on the YouTube so people can get their Fantastic. mind blown yeah. for a minute, but then seed it back into their consciousness mm -hmm. about, you know, hey, this is big time. Like either you're going to come it's up to the time. plate here I mean, we're, or somebody we're not, else is going to. This, you see, this is, this is the thing as well. And I think this is particularly in terms of the scaphological tradition, this tradition of angelic vessels, which is this uh, classified tradition, classis and naval fleet. It's been hidden from humanity for a long time. And in terms of deconstructing religion, religate, more a vessel, worship, which ship is a boat, it's really an important component and it underscores everything. So you cannot understand the religious tradition without understanding the scaphological tradition. But unfortunately, it's a classified tradition. It's a hidden mm. tradition. The naval tradition is a classified tradition, but it's found in all cultures, it's universal. And so the 
concept of the angelic sailor and I know kind of it was banded about for many years like with Van, Van Dyneken but there was never it was never tangible his ideas were philosophically interesting but that was it but this yes. we can bridge we can be scientific about this and this is important because academia is scoffing up uh, at this but yet they don't understand the um, tradition of the angelic sailor and it's so integral to decoding the ancient scriptures it's integral to understanding everything the origin on this planet and everything and so there has been this um, systematic attempt to undermine this within academia i don't actually think too that the illuminati are too bothered what the general man thinks they're more bothered about what the academics thinks they're more bothered about the people who push the buttons the administrators the people mm. who control and steer ideology they're mm. the ones that they're interested in and therefore this is why there has been the systematic attempt to undermine this subject which is a very serious subject and should be taken seriously within academia and so i think programs like this is really helping to hopefully to re-educate the general population so that when we start talking about things like ancient aliens people are not going to begin to scoff and laugh at themselves but take it seriously because the tradition which goes back into the ancient world as we said before this idea of abduction is not a new idea it goes back into the ancient languages and it goes back to the scatological tradition which is essentially going back to the tradition of flying saucers this is no longer speculation I have proved this within my books. Before, we just didn't know population, but I have demonstrated this within my book that the angelic sailor is linked into the ufological tradition. We now know this to be a fact, and it's pivotal to understanding everything within the religious and mythological tradition. And, it, and it's not known about. People in ufology just don't know about this. Right. You know, they, it just, they, they, it's almost like they're there to distract from it. Like they miss the exactly. mark completely. They take it exactly. either literal or over spiritual, but no research, no yeah. foundation. Exactly. So it puts it into the, the quackery kind of aspect or the right. conspiracy theory right. type of aspect of thing, which is yeah. exactly where they would want it because it keeps you from dissecting yeah. it fully, which locks us out of the mysteries. Exactly. And, and I, there it is. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, my son has got um, more subscribers than me. You know what I mean? This is this is how bad it is. It's really, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, this is this is so important to understanding everything because it's going back into so many different traditions in terms of our knowledge base. Human beings are suffering from amnesia. We are suffering from amnesia, and we need to learn about this because there is this occult has rewritten everything. And it's rewritten religion, it's rewritten mythology, and it's concealed behind who I describe as the disciples, the deceivers. They are these custodians of this knowledge. They are the protectorate of this knowledge. And they know about this knowledge. Whether you're in Japan with the Utsa no Fune, which are these the guarding the shrines, which are symbolic of these hollow ships, and not Utsa no Fune, which is a hollow vessel. They're, these vessels are physical and solid. They were buried underneath uh, the temples and so when we talk about the nuts and bolts of ufology and remember look at look at even the wordplay bolts as in a boat boat and bolts you know they're in always telling us um the the obvious in in terms of the symbolism and they are obsessed with symbolism and there is this codified discourse this private discourse which is found throughout the language of politics if you are interested in politics and you're listening to the politicians listen to the codified speech listen to what they're saying what is the subtext behind what they are saying and this is important we need to be literate in terms of symbolism to be able to decode what the illuminati themselves are saying and this priesthood goes back to the axari the uh, a brother of light but as we said the arabic word axari a brother of light is a wordplay on axari a brother of an angel but the word zar an angel is zar, which is an alien so we need to be going back to the traditions of the Axari, the Brothers of the Light, which is going back to the Seraphim, Puthonagoras, the Speaker of the Serpent, or the Pythagorean tradition, which goes back to Sirius. It, and this is found encoded within the classical orders, within the classical symbolism, within the um, two orders of the um, Illuminati, the Harrow Society, and the, and the two pillars of Freemasonry, and is found within the tripartite Illuminati, or the three orders of the Illuminati, which is essentially this Anthropos, the Anthropos being this uh, human, 
um, non-human element and then this grafted element and, and it's going back into the saucer cult and how they um, how the votive dish is represented as a flying saucer in which they worship ship is to venerate these um, angelic vessels it goes back to the mm. saucer Mm. And it goes back to the dialectic, the seraphim cherubim dialectic, this partition of knowledge between non-human and human angels, the humanist tradition, and then this uh, non-human element. Where essentially we're dealing here with the angelic host because they they appear often the angelic host appear together. So if you look at within cl classical carving, you will find that the serpent chariots, the opening, the wheels are combined with the ser seraph, which is the seraphic host. And then you'll see often um, an angel with a sword, which would be um, cherub, which is a word playing cherub, which is a sword. Again, these because they are part of a military cont contingent. They were representing them, the angels as marines space marines in the literal sense and these angelic sailors the angelic mariner it's so pivotal to understanding everything and i've been talking about this for you know i've been talking about it now for a long time and, yeah. and no one's paying attention you know it's like i think that <laughs> this big discoveries in theology it's massive the scaphological tradition nobody knows about it but it's integral to understanding everything within the religious tradition and nobody's talking about it within ufology you know i i've I've done lectures and uh, I've gone around talking about this and it seems like no one is actually paying attention but it is so integral to understanding everything so I think you're right we do need to talk about 